Hello everyone, Dr. Dave here uh, for my third video on the chapter dealing with development. Um, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about morality. So morality is knowing the difference between right and wrong and being able to act accordingly. That's usually the tough part. Let me tell you a little story. So there was a guy, um, he had a very sick wife, the guy's name was Heinz, and his wife was dying due to a, having a very rare form of cancer. And there was only one pharmacist in town who had the medicine necessary to cure her. The pharmacist was charging a lot of money for the drug, uh, way more than it cost. Um, the guy went to the pharmacist and asked the pharmacist if he would change the price or let him pay later. The pharmacist said no. Uh, the gentleman, Heinz, went to all of his friends in town but was only able to raise half the money and still the pharmacist wouldn't change the price or let him pay later. So in desperation, Heinz later broke into the store and stole the medicine. Should he have done that? Yes or no, and why? Well, it's a fictional story. Um, it's called The Heinz Dilemma, and there was a researcher named Lawrence Kohlberg who used that story to measure children's level of moral development. And he classified kids' moral development into three different levels. Um, the first level is called pre-conventional morality. And in this stage, morality is based on either what other people tell you, like my dad says that stealing is wrong, or based on self-centered reasoning. In other words, um, if Heinz won't get punished, it must be okay. Or if Heinz is going to be happy that his wife is alive, it must be okay. Um, usually in late childhood, some kid, most kids go into the second level. It's called conventional morality. And here, moral options are based more on how my actions impact others. So will other people view me as being a bad person because I stole medicine? Or will others view me as a good person because I did things to save my wife's life? Also, how do my actions impact others? If I steal the medicine, does that give other people the right to steal things that they want? Okay, and, uh, you know, if I steal the medicine, maybe there won't be enough for someone else uh, who has a very sick family member. Some people, only about a third, reach the final level. It's called post-conventional morality, where morals are based on your own personal set of ethics. In other words, you might believe that you do anything you can for the people you love. And so, of course, you would steal the medicine. Or you may believe that the right thing is based on, you know, looking out for the greater good of society. And if we let people steal things that they want, is that going to be a good way for society to function? Um, again, only about a third of all people reach that level. And in class, I like to give the example about a guy named Jack Kevorkian. You may or may not know that name, but about 25 years ago, um, he practiced something called assisted suicide. Uh, he was a medical doctor in Michigan, and he helped his former patients to end their life when they were suffering, um, and there was no chance of recovery. A lot of people disliked what he did, feeling like, you know, you shouldn't work to end people's lives. A lot of people respected what he did, you know, feeling that people shouldn't have to suffer endlessly. A lot of controversy regarding it at the time, but ultimately um, he was put in jail, charged with second degree murder, I believe, and he stayed there for quite a while. Um, he was eventually released, died a few years later. Uh, but anyway, his rationale was based on post-conventional morality. Um, even though he had nothing personal to gain from it, even though he knew people would dislike his choice, he felt like helping people to end their suffering was the right thing to do. So anyway, hope. Uh, that I helped you understand morality a little bit better. See you next time.